welcome to story time. I'm just admiring this purse that my mom sent me. Isn't it pretty? What I love about this purse is that it is made from old recycled plastic bags. If we take a closer look at this purse, you will notice that the geometric shapes have been weaved with strips of plastic. Old colorful plastic bags are washed then cut into strips and rolled into a spool of plastic thread used to make this purse. Plastic bags are everywhere. But what happens to old plastic bags? Yes, they get buried in landfills, which is so bad for the environment. Sometimes plastic bags get blown by the wind and they end up along roadways. Or worse yet, Sometimes they get eaten by animals which end up killing them. But what if we can find a solution to upcycle or recycle old plastic bags? Which brings me to today's inspiring story titled One Plastic Bag that introduces us to Isatu Sise, who finds a solution to upcycle old plastic bags and transforms her community. This is a true story. One plastic bag, Isitu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia. This book is written by Miranda Paul and illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. Njiao, Gambia. Isitu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips. One fruit tumbles then two, then ten. The basket breaks. Isutu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag, flapping in the wind and settles on a tamarind tree. Isutu slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isitu as Grandmother Mbombe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful Mbomba. Isutu scurries in and grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isutu confesses. But I found this. Plastic? Grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Day after day, Isutu watches. Neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and wanjo from tiny holes poked in clear bags. Market trays full with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Isutu shakes sand off her papers. Another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then ten, 
then a hundred. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Isatu grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her, until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isatu hears a goat crying and hurries towards grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he said. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Mbombe's powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and do something. But what? Isatu's feet lead her to the old ugly road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swamped near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. They forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile. Then two, then ten, then a hundred. What can we do? Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim pulling out almost soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Insha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the washed bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isutu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Why, yes! Her sister shows Isutu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isutu's fingers busy themselves. In, out, around. Jeraje, thank you. Isutu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isutu pauses. She and Peggy have an idea. But will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The women cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Naka Likibi asks grandmother, how is the work? Ndanka Ndanka, answers Isatu. Slow, some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty, but I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight, away from those who mock them. Until a morning comes, when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isutu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her. Then two, then ten, then... One woman lays Dalasi coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend. Then two, then ten. Soon, everyone wants one. Isutu fills her own purse with the lassi. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now.
she tells herself one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day it was. The end. This truly is an inspiring story. I encourage you to do some research on this recycling queen, Issa Tusise, and see how one person's small action can make a big difference.